Transverse plane, what occurs there? Rotation. Okay. Then there's a few other planes and a few other specialized movements that we'll talk about later. So then we mentioned you have non-axial joints, which is what kind of a joint? Plane joint, right? And then uniaxial is movement in one plane, which is going to be like the hinge joints. And then biaxial would be what kind of joints? Conloid joints. And then uh, <coughs> multiaxial, which would be what kind? All the all the socket. Yeah. So that's multiaxial, like the shoulder. Right. So let's take a break, and then we'll talk about more specific movement types. So joints. We talked about the structure of joints, right? We talked about the different classifications, either functionally, whether they're synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis, and diarthrosis. And then we talked about structure, either if they're fibrous or cartilaginous. And now are the fibrous and the cartilaginous joints, do they move very much? No. No. In what part of the skeleton are they found in mostly? Axial skeleton. Right. Just think about it. I mean, most of the time you're moving, you're, you're sh shaking and diving, right? You're moving your limbs, right? Your, your axial skeleton does not as much movement in it except for the spine. Right? And then we talked about the different kinds of joints, right? You have plane joints that are non-axial, they glide. Then you have uh, single axial joints, hinge joints, things like that, pivot joints. Then you have multi-axial, like condylate joints. And then you have multi-axial, and then I say multi condyloid is biaxial joints, and then ball and socket joints are multi-axial joints. So then the movement that's going to occur in joints, one of the types is angular movement. Right? So angular movement are things like flexion and extension. So when in doubt you start in anatomical position like this, right? Flexion is when you decrease the angle of the joint. So all this is going to be flexion. Okay. And then extension is the opposite where you're re reversing that. Okay. Increasing the angle. And then when you talk about specific things like in the foot, you talk about plantar flexion, which is pointing the toes, and dorsal flexion, which is bringing them up like this. And then that's in the sagittal plane. And then we talk about angular movement in the frontal or the coronal plane. There's going to be abduction and adduction, and then circumduction. That's going to be in more than one plane, but that's basically movement that describes a cone in space. So that's going to be And so here's an example of gliding movements. It's like when you're in the parade. Right? And then here's angular movement. So you have flexion, extension, things like that. And then sometimes we'll talk about hyperextension. So if I move like this and I do flexion, then when it's coming back, I'm going into extension. And then this could be considered hyperextension. And then, which one is this where the toes go out? Plantar flexion. What do you talk about? Is it plantar or dorsal? Dorsal flexion is up. Plantar flexion means point the toes. Dorsal flexion is up. And this is abduction, adduction. And then rotation would be. I need to get another prop to show rotation on right? So if this was my foot, this is eversion, and this is inversion. Okay. Then you have plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, and you have going away from the midline, what is that? A deduction or abduction? Yeah. And abduction. Okay. So what pronation is, it's eversion, dorsiflexion, and 
A B dot two. So it's the foot moving like that. So it's E version, plantar flexion, and AB duction. And then supination is the opposite. Inversion, dorsiflexion, and AD duction. So that's a little bit of complicated movements in the foot. And that occurs at the subtalar joint. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the foot and ankle. Okay. And then you have protraction and retraction. So protraction is basically moving forward. So you protract the head like this and then retract. And then you have elevation and depression. Okay, so elevation is like this. We talk about it a lot in terms of movement of the scapula. So elevation of the scapula, depression of the scapula. And then in the in the hand you have what's called opposition. And that's basically what you're talking about with the thumb. Because you know that's the big thing for humans is we're supposed to have opposing thumb, right? So opposition is where you're putting the, the pad of the thumb towards the fingers like this. So this is opposition. Okay. And there's a lot of pictures if you look in the uh, this trail guide thing, there's some specific things on the hand and the wrist and the shoulders, and we'll go over that after I do the slides on here. We're going to go over some stuff in here. So here's pronation, supination. The so supination is with the palm up, pronation is with the palm down. And then inversion is that where you're facing the dorsum of the foot inward. And then dorsal of the foot outward. I'm sorry, the plantar aspect. You're facing the bottom of the foot in for supination, I mean inversion, and then out for eversion. So there's inversion, where the bottom of the foot's facing in, or you're bringing the big toe towards the midline, and then eversion is going out. And then you're talking about the mandible, you're talking about protraction and retraction. So protraction is forward movement like this. And retraction like that. Or you can also do it with the head. And then elevation of the mandible basically is raising it up. And then depression of the mandible is dropping it down. And then there's opposition. Like I say, it's bringing the tips of the thumb towards the fingers. Okay? All right, so then we'll have to talk about a couple other things, and I don't know if they're in the notes, but there's, there's a few other special planes that we talked about. Remember we said there's sagittal, transverse, and frontal. Then there's a couple other things we talked about that's called, the, one of them is the plane of the scapula. So if you're looking at the scapula, like down this, like this in a cross section, transverse, is the scapula directly in the, in the frontal plane? No. Is it directly in the sagittal plane? Mm -hmm. No. It's like this. It's 30 degrees forward of the frontal plane. So, since it doesn't really fit any other plane exactly, what do we call it? Well, the plane of the scapula. Right? If I take this, and you're looking at it like this, right? You can see how it's like that. Can't hold this very long, so we got to quick. <laughs> it's basically the rib cage in a cylinder like this, right? Mm -hmm. So the scapula sits like this. So if you're looking down like that, it's like this. So, and then the other thing in the arm is you now we talk about this as flexion. So other terms that you may hear of it is called forward elevation. So flexion is also called forward elevation. And then this would be what? Abduction, moving away from the body, adduction, moving towards the body. Or like this. 